know how bad was it? What can you fix quick? What's more of a long-term prospect or project to get things straightened out? Well, I'll go backwards. Long, you know, long-term is experience. You know, and, and uh, just talking to the guys after the game of you know when you start digging digging a hole, re- realize you've to dig a hole and drop the shovel. Don't hold on to the shovel. Grab a bulldozer. Grab something else and just compile those things. And th- that's experience. And some stuff is is with time. Uh, all of it is coached, and as I said last night, we you know we didn't play winning football in any phase, and that is 100% on me. Period. Uh, whether it's personnel or scheme, that's you know or, or execution, that's co- that's coached, and that's coaching, and that's that's recognizing you know when it's uh, 20 to 13 there, and we're in, we're in great position to get a stop, and you know and up to that point have have done you know all things considered well. Um, it, it, you know, that's where we kind of got, got out of hand and started guessing a little bit, particularly on defense of, of trying to do something that wasn't our job. Um, and so again, that goes back to, to, to coaching it up and, and in some places that's personnel in some places that's scheme in some places that's a little bit more, uh, in some places a little bit simpler. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, just a million, a million things, but, uh, you know, losing, when you lose the the net putting battle, I think was like thirty yards per kick, twenty twenty one point differential off turnovers, a punt return for a touchdown. Um, uh, you know, again, we have to tip our cap to Utah, which nobody nobody ever is willing to do ever um, in this day and age. They they played great, and we we didn't. Mark, what did you see from your team as far as effort, especially once it got out of hand? Were guys still uh, giving it at all, or did they kind of slump their shoulders a little bit? Uh, in general, in general, we we were still playing hard. There's always, you know, one or two instances of that as as you as you take a look at the tape. But you know, our our guys care a lot, and and they'll they'll bounce back from this. We will we will we will survive we will be fine um there's always that overreaction to to both positive and negative this time of year um and you know you can choose to look at it however however you wish uh we've lost the number two team in the country and the number 10 team in the country right now and didn't didn't play well enough in either game or even close to to how well we could should play and again that starts with me and then all every every single person in this programming realizing what they can do differently Mike. Mark, yesterday when we talked to DeForest, he said, and, and he said that the young guys on the team on defense uh, can't expect to just put on a jersey and, and, and get a win. They have to work. And uh, would you say that uh, the veteran leadership needs to do anything different? Um, and do the young guys, how, how much more do they have to learn after last night? I think every single person in our program has to earn every single inch. You know, if you're Gary Campbell and you've been here for 57 years, he, he comes to work every single day trying to be great, you know, and it, it hurts him just as, as, as much as a senior or a true freshman or whoever. You have to earn every single thing in this game as a team. And that's that's where that stuff is, you know, very frustrating. If, if a D lineman is out of their gap and, you know, that's one one guy's job, that affects everybody. If, if one offensive linemen you know doesn't do their job everybody's affected but that's also the beauty of it too and and why it is why it is the greatest sport ever um is is everything is together every single thing the highs and the lows and and we 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 will get through this together right yeah, i talked a little bit about and experience, it, and I will give credit to Utah. I thought that was a very experienced, mature, motivated team when they came in here yesterday. You think maybe that kind of took your kids back half a step, or maybe it shocked them a little bit at just how focused Utah might have been? Um, I don't. I don't think necessarily that. You know, again, when it's when it was six six, and even you know thirteen six, and even twenty to thirteen at that at that point. Uh, you know, we had made some mistakes. We had uh, on the long, you know, the long quarterback runs, just missed assignments. We did obviously gave them some things or didn't, didn't, you know, take advantage of some things, I would say, offensively. Um, did, it, did a great job in the return game up to that point. Um, and now it's just, can you continue to do that? And, and, if, and if you just can't let one mistake become two or seven. Uh, and, and, you know, part of that, 
part of that will only happen with experience, but we'd, we'd, we'd love to be able to learn from somebody else's mistake a lot more than, more than ours. It's a lot more fun that way. Mark, after four games, is, is the QB situation still the same as it was coming into the season, or do you kind of want to just pick either Vernon or Jeff and say it's yours, go um, take all the reps, get get on the same page with everyone? Well, it's definitely different than it was, you know, the first week of the season, no, no doubt about that. Um, but that's that's the nature nature of the game sometime and just the ebb and flow of the season and, and uh, you know, that there's there's positions – quarterback that are that are like that of, of who's available and who's not and to what degree and how that affects their their psychology uh and and you know so that that will be that will be you know to be determined again again this week uh if if that's exactly where you're getting to don kind of described the mistakes last night as recycled things guys were doing similar mistakes from previous games and you said they need to find new guys maybe to to play does that mean position battles could open up on the defensive side there's yeah and that's what you know i was going back to there's there's personnel things there's scheme things but that's all again and and D, dp's not putting that on the players he's putting that on on us as coaches as well we we will um to 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 get it figured out and yeah i mean you know the 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 double pass, the, to the toss pass. We have two guys in great position to, to do their job and take it away on the the, the double move uh, long ball. We're, you know, we're 20 yards out of position. Those those are very frustrating things. And, and um, uh, so at some point, someone realizes, okay, I need to I need to that, which is very hard for a young person, especially focus on my one thing. I have one thing where my eyes should be one thing. Period. And and you know with all the, the moving parts of a of a football game, uh, the memory of of the previous play, whatever it is that that's that comes with experience and to trust trust what uh, what they've been trained to do. Awesome. When you look back at, at Vernon's game, did you feel like it was more physical or mental in terms of him just not being able to get in rhythm? Well, I you know again a lot is put on the quarterback position and and it's it's. Yes, is the answer. It's somewhere, you know, somewhere on that that spectrum uh, of playing with with total confidence. Um, nobody knows that answer really, really, but him. And it, and again, it wasn't a one man one man deal. Um, uh, but again, that you know, there's there's guys playing with those those issues at different positions um, that are that are battling, that are in and out, and, and you know, in a similar in a similar way. Obviously, that plays out differently at at quarterback. Rick, just curious uh, in your playing career, did you ever have a ball game where the wheels got away from you like last <laughs> night? I had a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, I've never been, you know, the third quarter of that game. That was that was bizarre. Uh, and again, give give Utah a ton of credit, um, uh, you know, for for that. Um, but it was certainly a situation. It, it, it felt like something was the stars were aligned somehow. Very oddly, we've been on the the other end of it. Um, and and we're going to work like heck to to not let that ever happen again. Open up questions to those on the phone. Sure. Are there any questions on the phone? Yes. Sure. Can I go? Go. Mark, the parts of Utah that a lot figured would be strong as far as special teams and defense were really strong as well as Devonte Booker. I was. Curious if you were surprised with how well Travis Wilson, who was such a big question mark coming into the game, with how he played last night. I've always been a big Travis Wilson fan. I know that he's been in and out of their lineup, um, and he he runs a lot better than than people give him credit for. He's hard to tackle, um, and you know we made it that much worse when we we basically didn't account for him twice. Um, but I think he's a, a very good player. And, and, you know, when you can run the ball or have the appearance of being able to run the ball, which they can do whenever 23 is in the backfield, that, that opens up a lot of options. Mark, as a head coach, how do you balance uh, when you have to take the situations like this where you have to in some ways make big changes or potentially make big changes but you don't want to convey to your guys that you're kind of panicking or, or running from what brought you here. 
how do you do that? How do you kind of shift on the fly dramatically but not, uh, you know, kind of make it look like things are, are to the, to the player is very bad? Well, yeah, I think, again, you, it, it's not very bad. There aren't wholesale changes necessary, and we're not going to go away from, from what we do. Uh, I, I told the team last night, I believe every, in every single one of those guys. I believe in every single one of those coaches. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> if, you're in, if you're in this sport long enough, last night happens. It's going to happen. Uh, how we react to that is, is, is under our control. Um, we make we make constant changes. There's constant evolution when things are going great, and when things aren't going great, uh, you know everybody wants to point the finger. But you know, we are definitely a, an outfit that is going to going to keep that internal and 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 make the make the adjustments uh, and and go. Mark, as the media often does with, with Alabama last week and, and Oregon this week, there are sort of claims or opinions that results like this signal the end of an era. How do you respond to that, and how do you keep your players from hearing that stuff? Well, I think it's impossible to keep anyone from, from hearing anything but, but focus on the, the voices that matter. And, you know, that's the coaches, that's your teammates, uh, that's the voice in your head. You know that that you allow to to take control of 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 going forward and and you know not not letting what has happened affect the future in a, in a negative way. We obviously want to you know have it affect us in a, in a positive way and and make it a comeback. Um, but yeah, I mean every, every what was it every road Pac-12 team lost this week. There's 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 weird stuff that happens all the time. Where do we go from here? Anything else from there anyone? Any, was there anything on the offensive film and anything anything on the defensive film that jumped out at you that maybe you hadn't really taken note of or noticed during the game? Um, no, not necessarily. Not not of of something unknown that happened there during the game. No. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.